Oh my god. They just forgot to unlock the door, that's all. Names like Winkies, Wetsons, and VIPs may not sound too familiar, but what about names like TGI Fridays or Hardee's? We're looking at the fate of some beloved fast food chains that are no longer with us, and a few that may be on their way out real soon. It's... it's gone. Official All-Star Cafe. Hello? Hollywood? Most of us are familiar with Planet Hollywood, the celebrity-themed restaurant featuring plenty of Hollywood memorabilia and superstar aesthetics. Now, what if you take that concept but replace celebrities with superstar athletes? This could be a game changer. That was the idea behind the official All-Star Cafe. The sports-themed chain was an offshoot of Planet Hollywood and featured images and mementos from superstar athletes like Wayne Gretzky and Shaquille O'Neal. The cafe debuted in Times Square in the mid 90s before opening to other locations in Mexico and Las Vegas, before interest began to wear off. Suffice it to say, it was only a matter of time before the official All-Star Cafe officially closed its doors after filing for bankruptcy in 1999. Well, we tried. VIPs. Is this how you treat your VIPs, Ryan? Nowadays, the fast casual dining experience is rather easy to come by. Franchises like Applebee's, Olive Garden, Denny's, and the like are just about everywhere. But but back in the day, this kind of dining experience was limited to only a handful of franchises, such as VIPs. VIP, learn your acronyms. <laughs> The chain stretched from the Pacific Northwest all the way to Northern California and even reached Nevada. The chain eventually branched off into several Mexican restaurants and continued to do well financially until Denny's purchased most of their stores in the early 80s. Oh, it's not for sale. Everything's for sale, buddy. Yankee Doodle Dandy. You are America. True patriots. There's nothing like a bit of good old patriotism to rile up your appetite. USA! USA! This was the case for Yankee Doodle Dandies for more than 50 years. The burger chain, which started life as Yankee Doodle House, was famous for having a menu similar to that of Burger King and Burger Chef. Yankee Doodle Dandy had close to 30 locations at its peak in the late 70s, with many of them in Chicago. Unfortunately, Yankee Doodle Dandy went out of business in the 80s. How sad is that? Doggy Diner. You came to top dog tip. If dogs are said to be man's best friend, then a fast food chain with a dog seam should have the customers flocking in. Doggy Diner was a San Francisco Bay Area chain that served up hot dogs and burgers. My hot dog! The chain was successful until it tried to compete with the mega burger chains, which sealed Doggy Diner's fate. And before long, the chain was out of business. However, hot dogs sporting the Doggy Diner name can still be purchased at Oracle Park. Go Giants! What's up with all the ketchup? Thank you for asking, Rosa. It's for my hot dog. Wink. Should we get lunch? I would love a cheesesteak. I was thinking the exact same thing. When you think of Pennsylvania and food, most will tend to picture the iconic cheesesteak. This is really good cheesesteaks. But once upon a time, there was a chain serving burgers that was popular enough to rival the mighty cheesesteak. Well, maybe that's going too far. Winkies was a burger chain out of Pittsburgh known for its signature burgers, the Great One, the Ground Runner, and the Big Wink, as well as for its 15-cent hamburger. Along with its cheap and delicious burgers, the chain was also known for whimsical commercials. However, this didn't prevent the chain from filing for bankruptcy in the early 80s. Look at this sorry miserable squashed thing. Mighty Casey's. The mighty Mighty. Mighty Casey's was a fast food theme restaurant centered around the chain's namesake, the literary character Casey Jones. The franchise's baseball-themed dishes and overall aesthetic were both fun and inviting. The Atlanta-based chain also managed to squeeze a few Southern favorites onto the menu, such as Cajun wings and biscuits and gravy. Gravy. Using premium ingredients and fantastic recipes gave Mighty Casey's a leg up and made the chain stand out among the other franchises. Unfortunately, Mighty Casey's struck out in 1994 after fast food chain Crystal bought them out. Shut up and take my money! First time here? Well, be like the cool kids and hit that subscribe button and never miss out. Thanks, you're the best. The show goes on! Pup and Taco. We only really serve Mexican food.
one Mexican cheeseburger. You can't go to Southern California and not see a ton of Mexican restaurants, but there isn't an overabundance of Mexican-inspired fast food chains in the region, except for the popular chains such as Taco Bell. You wanna go to Taco Bell? However, once upon a time, there was a popular Mexican chain located in Pasadena called Pup and Taco. Pup and Taco served up not only tacos, but also other famous Mexican dishes and non-Mexican items like hot dogs, fries, and sandwiches. The chain expanded out of California and into New Mexico, eventually reaching over 100 locations in the early 80s. Sadly, a major buyout by Taco Bell meant the end of the famous franchise. It is what it is. Wetsons. Hamburgers. The cornerstone of any nutritious breakfast. Nowadays, there aren't many burger chains that rival the big three. Fat Burger, In-N-Out, and Five Guys are carving a niche out for themselves, but back in the day, there was a lot more competition. Like a lot. Places such as Wimpy's, Henry's, and Wetson's were all vying for top spot on the burger mantle. Wetson's in particular stood out for its 10-cent fries, 15-cent burgers, and its signature burger, the Big W. Unfortunately for the Long Island chain, all the 15-cent burgers burgers in the world wouldn't save them from the bigger burger chain's massive expansion, and it wasn't long before Wetson's was no more. Not good enough. Val Steakhouse. You know what they say about tenderloin, always a risky option, it's gotta be done just just right. There's nothing quite like a good steak. It's one of the most popular meats in this country for a reason. With that said, there is definitely no shortage of steakhouses across the country, and one of the oldest and most popular was Val Steakhouse. First opening up its doors in the early 1930s, Val's operated primarily on the East Coast, stretching from Boston to Maine, and served up prime steaks as well as lobster and other fresh seafood. Yes, I eat the fish. The chain continued to thrive until the 70s when the franchise franchise started to decline. Eventually, unflattering reviews and poorly thought-out expansion into the South led to Val's closing its doors after 90 years in 2000. I'll take that steak to go, please and thank you. Kenny Rogers Roasters. Check it out. Wow, Kenny Rogers Roasters finally open. Many celebrities feel the need to move away from their comfort zone and branch out into new ventures. Kenny Rogers seemingly couldn't resist the urge to enter the thriving world of chain restaurants and introduced the world to Kenny Rogers Roasters. Rogers' chain of chicken restaurants served up wood-fired rotisserie chickens along with other southern-style sides such as cornbread and macaroni salad. The chain opened its doors for the first time back in 1991 and was well-received. But due to heavy competition, Kenny Rogers Roasters failed to keep up. Oh, the chain closed its doors in the mid-90s, at least in the U.S. However, the chicken franchise caught on in some Asian countries where they continue to enjoy success. Not bad. Not bad. Shook's fresh and tasty. Nothing better than when they're fresh. Better. If you're not familiar with Chooks Fresh and Tasty, that's probably because you're not Australian. Australia, mate! Yes, this Aussie chain served up both barbecue and fried chicken down under style for more than 30 years. Operating in the southwestern part of Australia, Chooks had 34 locations at its peak. The formerly named River Rooster ran for 32 years until the franchise became defunct in 2010 after being bought out and converted into chicken treat franchises. Another pop popular Australian chicken chain. Cuckoo ka cha! Cuckoo ka cha! Pumpernick. Still a ripoff. While most in this country may not be familiar with Pumpernick, the Argentinian franchise was a massive hit in its home country back in the mid-70s. With a logo similar to that of Burger King, Pumpernick served up burgers, fries, and other fast food staples, and managed to spread across Argentina and Buenos Aires with 70 locations. Sadly, bad management and poor food standardization, which caused food to vary drastically from franchise to franchise, along with the introduction of the mega burger chains into the country, caused Pumpernick Nick to decline. Not cool. Unfortunately, the chain filed for bankruptcy and was finished by 1999. Bankruptcy! Gino's Burgers. Horrifying, artery-clogging hamburger. Yeah! For some reason, athletes love to get into the restaurant biz, and we're all grateful for it. Noise. 
former Baltimore Colts, now Indianapolis Colts, defensive end Gino Marchetti's burger chain burst onto the fast food scene in the late 1950s. Gino's served up burgers, fries, and fried chicken for more than 40 years, and at its peak ended up merging with a drive-in chain called Tops before ultimately declining. A handful of issues, including many customers confusing the franchise with the similarly named Papa Gino's, plagued the chain, and eventually Gino's closed its doors forever in the early 80s. Though Gino's didn't truly close up shop, as there are two locations still open today. Oh, right. Well, that is good to know. Mini Pearl's Chicken. Fried chicken is fry fry chicky chick. Back in the late 60s, John Jay and Henry Hooker, along with Nashville comedian Minnie Pearl, decided to open their own fried chicken restaurant after being inspired by KFC. Delicious. Using KFC as a blueprint and Minnie Pearl as the mascot, the chain, Minnie Pearl's Chicken, debuted on the scene to great initial success. Unfortunately, this restaurant was created solely for the purpose of making money and the quality was lacking, with various locations having completely different recipes for their chicken. Minnie Pearl's was 40 locations strong and none of them were making money, and eventually the franchise closed all its locations for good. It's too much! It's too much! White Tower. Same, same, but different. This chain debuted all the way back in 1926 in Milwaukee. The burger chain was often compared and even called an imitator to White Castle and served up classic hamburgers and soft drinks. Hamburger! At its peak, White Tower had over 200 locations until the chain eventually began to decline. Despite trying to reinvent itself several times by incorporating curb service as well as other creative ventures, White Tower was defunct by 2004. Failure! Failure! Steak and Shake. What in the devil's name is this? Where's the steak? Steak and Shake may not be as well known as other famous burger joints, but the franchise, which has been around for almost 90 years, has continued to serve up steak burgers and shakes to the masses. This milkshake is outrageous. Sadly, Steak and Shake isn't doing as well as it has in the past. While the Midwest chain hasn't completely closed its doors, many of its locations have closed up shop. About 30 Steak and Shake locations have permanently shut down over the last year. The chain has, however, managed to turn a profit by adjusting to a counter-service kiosk model. But with many of its locations closing up, the profit the chain generated may not be enough to prevent Steak and Shake from closing up entirely. No! God! Boston Market. What? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Back in the day, there weren't many franchises that specialized in chicken. Sure, there was KFC, but then came along Boston Chicken. Never heard of it? Well, that's because the chain is now called Boston Market. Boston Chicken set itself apart from the other chicken franchises by offering rotisserie chicken instead of the fried chicken we were all used to. The chain also served up other deliciousness, such as baby back ribs and rotisserie chicken nuggets. Chicken nugget, I'd like to eat you while I drive. And Unfortunately, even after the name change, this beloved chain may be closing up shop permanently in 2023. Boston Market has its share of problems, such as a large pile of lawsuits for failing to pay vendors and former employees. With these issues plaguing the chain, it's estimated that Boston Market may disappear completely in the years to come. Fingers crossed. TGI Fridays. Go to a TGI Fridays, do some jello shots till this guy pukes up a lung. TGI Fridays is the epitome of fast casual dining. Fun, relaxed, and plenty of delicious menu items, the chain was not only a smash hit in the US, but also around the world, with hundreds of locations planet-wide. However, those sunny days are starting to look rather gray for TGI Fridays lately. Recent years haven't been kind to this iconic fast casual chain, as many key locations were forced to close their doors after 15 years. Thought, if you listen Help! This wasn't unforeseen, as a TGI Friday's former CEO estimated that the chain would be forced to close 20% of its locations in coming years. If this trend continues, we could be witnessing the end of the chain. No! Just go on. No! Jack in the Box. Me, no Jack in Box! You Jack in Box! Even with all the burger franchises out there, it's easy to forget that there's more than just McDonald's and Burger King and Wendy's. Other chains often get lost in the fast food shuffle, and particularly the West Coast burger chain Jack in the Box. The franchise was immortalized in the popular Tarantino film Pulp Fiction in the 90s. Where'd you get him? 
McDonald's, Wendy's, Jack in the Box. And has been serving up burgers, fries, and other goodies for over 70 years. However, recently, the chain has been shutting down many of its stores, with as many as 40 locations across seven states, mostly the Southeast and Texas, closing due to underperformance. If this trend continues, it appears that there's a strong possibility that Jack in the Box may soon go the way of the dinosaur. Definitely sounds bad. Okay. Hardies. There were dark times. Like when I work at First Moscow Hardee's. <laughs> No, Hardee's hasn't closed down. Well, not entirely. First, a little refresher on the burger chain. For those not in the know, Hardee's is a burger franchise located primarily out of the South and Midwest United States. A sister chain to Carl's Jr., Hardee's serves up mostly the same items you'll find at any Carl's Jr. A fun fact about Hardee's is you won't find the chain in Canada, thanks to a trademark dispute with a famous Canadian burger chain, Harvey's, and its similar-sounding name. I will sue you for all your worth. A not-so-fun fact is that Hardee's has seen better days. Unfortunately, the chain is on a downward spiral, closing many of its locations just last year. With a decline of 4.2% in sales last year, the underperforming burger chain was forced to close 39 of its locations. Given that the franchise is only 145 locations strong, that's a major blow and may signal the end of Hardee's may be near. We're serving up great videos 24-7. Just tap or click, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad.